Hey everyone, so it has been a while and it is long overdue. We have not talked about lens materials in quite some time. It's a topic I don't like to get into too much because it can get confusing very quickly. And realistically, there's not a lot of changes in lens materials. It doesn't happen super often. Uh, unfortunately, it has not happened yet, but I feel like this is one video that we've not redone in the studio and properly. So let's give it some justice. Let's dive in and let's take a look at some of the different lens materials, pros and cons of each, and have some fun. So having fun with lens materials probably doesn't sound like a thing for a lot of you. For me, it's exciting. I like to dive into the lens materials, even if I only maybe use one or two the vast majority of the time. <sighs> yeah, well, sometimes you find what you like, right? So we'll start with the bare basic. I'm not gonna grab a whole lot of samples, actually. I had thought about it, but really on camera, you're not gonna be able to see that qualitative difference. So in plastics, of course, you have a variety of materials. In glass, you have a further variety of materials. Glass isn't as common today, and that is another reason I did want to do this video. It is getting harder and harder and harder with every passing day to find a good source for glass prescription and non-prescription lenses. Uh, really, there's two left out there doing glass for sunglasses. You've got Corning and you've got uh, the Essilor owned Barberini, and they make a lot of sunglasses. Uh, huh. Yeah. They're both great, of course. No problems on that end. Glass, of course, is gonna be your most optically beautiful material to look through, right? And it's standard 1.5 crown glass form is going to be the most crisp, beautiful view you will have of the world you have ever seen. And it is incredibly abrasion and scratch resistant. Of course, that's the big thing with glass. Of course, the con is it is a little bit heavier than some of the plastics you're going to have. Uh, you know, especially in the prescription lenses. Some of these sun lenses, they've been able to thin down really nicely and still chem and heat treat them so they are impact resistant enough to pass the standards and be sold in the US. You guys overseas, maybe that's not as much of a problem for you. Here, it's a big problem. We have the FDA to deal with and they say these lenses have to take an impact from a metal ball dropped from a certain height on the lens and they have to be tested. It's great stuff. You can wind up with a lot of broken shards around. <laughs> now, maybe that's something to do with why we can't find glass as much in the US today as we could. The sources are getting slimmer and slimmer. Now we're having issues with coatings on glass and it's just a mess, honestly. So the prescription side of things, glass, it's looking dismal these days. We can still get it, but it's getting tougher. I've got one lap I can still work with and get glass from. It's not a great situation. Uh, they're still looking for a new coating company for anti-reflective coatings. At this point, we can't get AR coatings on glass, at least not when you're gonna want on it because the whole point of glass is the durability of the material. If your AR coating is gonna fail in a year or less, what's the point of getting the glass? Hmm. Well, I guess if you want the optical experience and don't care about the durability of it, that's fine. Most people, they care about the durability of it. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other glass materials. We're not gonna get into those today. Just know glass is your kind of optical king and scratch resistance king. Wait, it sits on the ground, it's sunk to the bottom of the river, nobody cares anymore. Now with the plastics, it's all about balance. So with your plastic materials, you have your standard CR39. This guy I am gonna grab just because it was super handy here, uncoated regular plastic, razor sharp edge. Mm. Yep, nice sharp edge. This guy here is about a minus five CR39 blank at 60 millimeters, maybe 65. I forget which one this is. I'm not getting out a ruler for this. Now, that is going to be your most optically clear or the least chromatic aberrated plastic material. I'm inventing words today. I don't even think chromatic aberrated is a thing but it is going to have the least amount of chromatic aberration, also known as 
Abby in the optical world. This is the most common term you will find when it comes to describing the optical qualities of plastic lenses. Uh, it's even used in glass lenses. I don't feel it truly encompasses what a lens material is capable of. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not gonna get into that on this video. I think that's a little bit too deep for our uh, level here. And let's just stick it at that today. Careful where you go sticking things. Uh, Yes, so the CR39 is going to be your most optically sound compared next to glass. It's not a huge, huge difference between the two. It's one, if you are super, super particular, you can see that difference once you get beyond that 20 foot range. Obviously they're both great to there. It's not gonna be a huge difference. It's when you get to that 100 feet to infinity range that you can begin to see a difference. All right, telescope optics or glass, keep that in mind. Now, the CR39 scratch resistance is pretty close in uncoated form to the glass lenses also in uncoated form. Once coated, it's a little bit different ball game. The AR coating is gonna determine your scratch resistance level or your scratch resistant coating is going to determine your scratch resistance level. That basically applies to all of the rest of the plastic lenses. If your scratch and AR coating is not good, that's it, that's the end of the game. Uh, it doesn't matter how scratch resistant the material is, and most plastics today are going to be AR coated when used. Just kind of how it goes, right? We want as clear as we can get. Some of the glass lenses, it's not as huge of a deal, and that's why I did mention that earlier. You know, we can still get it not AR coated, but it's still more clear than an uncoated plastic lens. It's just how that works. Now, aside from CR, the other most common Plastic material is more polymer. <laughs> They're all polymers. Polycarbonate, right? This is the one everybody knows and loves and everybody wants to shit on all day long. Me included, sorry. But it is one of the most common materials in stock sunglasses. So almost, well, well, I really can't even say that. It's pretty common today in most of your polarized lenses, period. Whether we're surfacing a prescription into it or not, it is very, very common to see polycarbonate as the main one to come across. Now, that to say, polycarbonate today is not what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, and we still get a lot of the hate for it that it deservedly so had back then. Uh, Polycarbonate at one time was so bad you could actually see the flakes of carbon in the material. Very dirty, very dusty and looking, and of course the optical qualities were inherently bad. Now, polycarbonate is still one of the lowest Abbey values. But again, that's not what I really want you to focus on here. Abbey is purely a measure of chromatic aberration. That means if you're looking dead out of the center of the lens and nowhere else, it has zero relevance. Abbey is a measure of the chromatic aberration taking away from center off gaze angle. So in a smaller lens, it's fine. In a sunglass lens, think about this for a second. If we are measuring chromatic aberration, that is the dispersion of the red and blue spectrum passing through the lens at an oblique angle, right? That's where your Abbey number comes from. So it is a specific nanometer range that is pushed through the lens and measured for on the back side, coming in at an angle off the center of the lens. What are sunglasses doing? Think about your use there. It is blocking a big chunk of the spectrum. In particular, almost all sunglasses block a vast majority of the blue light because what does the sun emit? Mostly blue light. So if we are darkening the spectrum, we're not pushing as much blue through the lens. Guess what your polycarbonates are not going to have as much of a problem with? There you go. Now there's other problems with polycarbonate. Again, getting deeper beyond the level there. I don't wanna to go too much, too, too beyond surface deep on this one. I'm gonna try and keep it gentle for now. If you wanna know more, we can get into that in the comments, or maybe we can do more dedicated, properly uh, tested and shoved videos around on other things. Eh. Mm. That sounds like it could be a whole trouble. But I like trouble, so maybe. Now, polycarbonate, 
is always, for whatever reason, in today's world, referenced right next to Trivex. That's because someone somewhere decided Trivex was this mythical creature that had come along and it blows polycarbonate out of the water. It's still a safety material. It's still really thin. No, it's not. And it's beautiful and it gives us great optics because it has this Lowy Abbey number. And uh, that's true, but it has other issues as well. <sighs> Hivex, we're not talking about Hivex yet. You see where my brain's going. Trivex generally runs thicker than most of the other materials. It's just the nature of it. It's going to be much thicker than polycarbonate. It usually runs as thick to occasionally a little bit thicker than even CR39 lenses. CR39 lenses have a 1.5 refractive index. Trivex has a 1.53, but that doesn't mean we can surface the center as thin on Trivex as CR39. Depends on the lens that's being ran and the situation for the rest of the lens. It gets fun, I warned you. But it is slightly better than polycarbonate if thickness isn't an issue. What's funny is we still see polycarbonate as the primary Plano sunglass lens, where Trivex is over here and Plano, the thickness isn't going to be that big of a difference. And it is lighter than polycarbonate at the same density. And yet it's not commonly done in sunglasses. I don't know what's up with that, but I think it's an interesting thing to keep in the back of your mind. There are some companies, I believe Canons is a Trivex-like material, uh, but it's the only company right off the top of my head that I know of that does that. There's not a lot of others. Maui Gym, maybe? It sounds familiar. At least in their RX program, I know they offer it. Yeah, so there's that. It's a short list, okay? Now, next up, my favorite. Hyvex lenses. Hyvex lenses are the optical Goldilocks, okay? I mentioned before, it's all about balance when it comes to the plastic polymer lenses because it is. It's a balancing act, literally. You're choosing between thickness, optics, weight, and that's it. How light passes through the lens, how heavy it is on the nose, and how it looks. The Goldilocks is the Hyvex. Hyvex is made in two formulations, actually, so we've got a little bit of wiggle room there. It is both a 1.56 and a 1.60. Both higher than the others. They're in that same range as polycarbonate. I do want to throw that out there. I did not mention earlier the refractive index on poly is going to be about 1.58, depending on your source, 1.585. 1.59 is generally what we see it listed as. So it falls right there in between the two Hyvex formulas. The Hyvex 156 offers a little bit better light transmission than the 160. The 160 is a little bit thinner. Both of them, weight-wise, are gonna run in that same territory. Again, when you're talking this 0 0.04 difference in refractive index, it's not a huge jump, okay? You're talking generally less than a half of a fingernail difference between the two in a surface prescription going into a frame. It's not a big, big jump. For that matter, this is one I did wanna grab these guys out for. And it's not a super fair comparison because we do have a larger lens. These are both minus five. This is CR39. This is the Hyvex 1.6. And yeah, uh, the thickness difference, again, very, very minimal here. You know, even at this huge sizing, it's pretty minimal. Now, I will say if we want to be fair, you could trim about a quarter to a half a millimeter off that thickness deviation between the two, because again, this is a larger lens. That larger lens amounts to more thickness at those outer edges. It's not a perfect comparison, and that's why I decided I didn't really want to use those today, but it does make an example of how little difference thickness makes as much as uh, actually getting those nicely centered in the lenses the uh, refractive index, not thickness. Sorry. Call me out on that. Go ahead. Just pour into it. Now, the reason I like this one, and I say it's the optical Goldilocks, it has the best balance of those three things, in my opinion. It's molecular, molecular, molecular structure is going to be the closest to the glass format. It's a little bit more crystalline than the other materials, meaning light passes through it better. That's just it. Light 
passes through it better. That's all you can say about that. I'm not gonna get into the Abbey of it because it is still better than the polycarbonate. It is in line with Trivex. It is good, it's good, good. It's not as prone to yellowing as the other options we're gonna get into as well. That is getting into the 1.6, 1.7, and 174. They're a little bit more prone to yellowing over time. CR39 does a little bit, not quite as much. It also shrinks a little bit more. The Hyvex, I'm rambling through these really quickly now. <sighs> the Hyvex is not as prone to that. It does not shrink with age, which means your lens isn't gonna start rattling as it gets older. Like me, I'm rattling as I get older. In the seconds, if you can count, go back to the beginning of this video and come back to now and you'll see the difference. I'm rattling more already. Uh, yes, but sweet habit. This does balance everything nicely. It's fairly thin, it's fairly light, it's optically beautiful. You know, for most prescriptions, it's a really, really good balance point. As you get up there into the higher prescriptions, I'm gonna say plus five, minus eight is where it starts to get a little bit more iffy. That's where you kind of need to start swaying a little bit more to the 167, 170, and 174s. And those, I'm not gonna get onto too much today because the 170 is hard to come by. The 167 is a more common material. It's used more often, but I can tell you it is not that important for the vast majority of wearers. It is gonna be comparable to polycarbonate, but it's gonna be a little bit thinner. It's gonna yellow a little bit more with age, but it's not gonna be as optically beautiful, but it's thinner. Hmm. Yeah, 174 is going to be the same story. It's thinner than the 167. Its optics are slightly better, which is interesting, but until you get over that eight to 10 power range, it's not gonna make much of a difference. And unfortunately at that power range, generally you care a whole lot more about optics than thickness. It's probably more true today than it used to be. I do still have some customers that call, it's like, hey, I want this as thin as I can get. I'm like, I can do it, but here's what I would recommend. If you care about how you see and not just how the lenses look right here, because it makes no difference for all the rest of it. Yeah, it's a discussion I have way too often. I have had people call before, and in fact, one is about 174 in particular, once it's as thin as it can possibly be, which amounts to we need a 1.0 to 1.1 thickness center. And that is compromising a lot on the optics of the lens, just to get it as thin as it can possibly be. So much better ways to do that, but that's what they were stuck on. So that's what happened with that. Now, I actually didn't make those glasses, by the way. My opinions matter. Now, actually, yeah, that's good. The, the 167, the 170, the 174, there's not a huge amount of differences between those. I will say optically 1.7 is going to be your gold locks there between the 167 and the 174. Uh, it does, I'm gonna put a lifespan on that one. It does not uh, age very, very well, but it's a good looking lens and it's a good seeing lens. Better than both the 167 and the 174 in terms of optics. So that's always nice to see. Now, we have gone on, we are pushing 20 minutes here talking about lens materials. I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions, definitely hit those comments down below. Leave me any of your thoughts on these lens materials, what you've worn in the past, and your preferences. Because the more I get this from other people, the more I know what's going on and what people are preferring. And I kinda like knowing what's going on out there. You guys help a lot with that. <sighs> Zen moment. Enjoy. It's great getting to sit here and ramble. I hope you guys enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. These are always kind of the fun ones for me. So that's all I've got for today. I'll catch you guys next time.